Welcome to The Green Room, a place where theater professionals hang out and talk about their practice, process, and profession. I'm Jeremy Dobrish, director slash playwright, and today we're doing our 5-4 segment, five questions for Lorenzo Pisoni. So, who's Lorenzo Pisoni, and why are we talking to him? Well, Lorenzo is an actor whose recent credits include Equus on Broadway, Henry IV at Lincoln Center, and Election Day at Second Stage. Lorenzo is a good-looking and charismatic actor who also has an incredible sense of comedy as well as a self-deprecating quality that allows him to make fun of himself. But what really separates Lorenzo from the rest of the pack is the fact that he literally grew up in the circus. Lorenzo's father started the Pickle Family Circus, and Lorenzo has transformed his experience as a circus kid into a one-man show called Humor Abuse, which is now playing at Manhattan Theatre Club and has received some very well-deserved rave reviews. MTC, by the way, is also the current home of Ruined by Lynn Nottage, which is one of the most compelling, thought-provoking, and entertaining plays of the season, and really worth catching. It's been extended a third time into May, so check it out. And I just want to say, kudos to Manhattan Theatre Club for having two really great plays right next to each other, side by side, in the city center space. Today, we're here to talk to Lorenzo. Hi, my name is Lorenzo Pizzoni. We're here in the VIP lounge at City Center at Manhattan Theatre Club. And we're here talking about humor abuse, which is the story of my growing up with my father, Larry Pizzoni, who founded the Pickle Family Circus, which is where I learned clowning and acrobatics and life lessons all from a guy who was wearing a red nose. How do you go from wanting to do a one-man show about your life to having your show done at Manhattan Theatre Club? Um... <laughs> Well, first, I wasn't sure that I wanted to do a one-man show. I tried to do a two-person show, but my partner uh, developed stage fright and is living in Alaska as a writer. So I had to do a one-person show. And then I um, had worked at Manhattan Theatre Club before, doing Last Dance, that was a Marsha Norman play, that Lynn Meadow directed. And this was 2003, maybe. And um, a clown friend of mine, was running uh, the Spiegel tents down at the South Street Seaport. And in September, I had a day off from rehearsal of another play I was doing. And my clown friend said, come use the Spiegel tent. I did. A bunch of Manhattan Theater people, uh, Manhattan Theater Club people came to see it and uh, told Lynn that they should see it, that she should see it. And um, she invited me to do a special kind of presentation of it months later. And that was it. Many one-person shows come across as self-indulgent. How did you manage to make yours different? Uh, Erica Schmidt. I think that's my secret. I, I mean, she... I have the tendency to go for cheesiness, and she um, absolutely doesn't. The, the preliminary script that I gave her took me about two months to just kind of whip it out. But what I wrote was very superficial. It was more a history of clowning, less about me and my father. Um, and, uh, and then Erica got it and she started to morph it into this story about me and my father. And then have the clowning kind of interspersed as, as a baseline. Um, but really she, she took it on as a father-son or parent-child kind of play. And so I think it's a combat, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like the perfect storm. Because we get enough sentimentality in there, in, in a good sense. You know, nostalgia, I guess, is a better word than sentimentality. And then she would always bring me back. How did it feel to perform a show that explores the relationship between you and your father with him in the audience? Um, it was kind of amazing. I, 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 you know, I had this romantic notion when I first set out to do this that I wouldn't, he didn't ever read the script. He hadn't, you know, he didn't really know what this show was. Um, and uh, I thought, okay, I'm just going to make sure that he doesn't until he sees it opening night somewhere. And I had prepared myself for a few of the details that I kind of talk about in the show that would be difficult. Um, but so many things that I talk about in the show, I've never spoken with my father about. Um, and so it was amazing to be on stage doing a show and being surprised like having, it was like this kind of out of body experience. So I was having these memories going full, f you know, force in my head and trying to still do the play because, you know, my dad was sitting, you know, feet from me. 
watching the show. It was totally wild and, and very unexpected. How did you manage to make a show about clowning not just funny, but poignant as well? I think because it's about a parent and child, I think it, it has such potential to be poignant. And I also think that a lot of clowning is, if it's decent, it can be. Because it, it, clowning only works when you tap into things that everyone's experienced so that you can relate and empathize and sympathize and all that. Because we all have these relationships with a parent that they're good, they're bad, they're difficult, they're easy, but we all have that. And so, and because I think, I think we use one adjective in the entire text, uh, and the rest is just like, you know, it's very straightforward, that I think it allows for people to project onto the play in a way that maybe you wouldn't with something that was more, I don't know, verbose. So I think that allows also for the poignancy to come out because everyone is saying, oh yeah, that reminds me of the time, or I've seen that, or done that, or, you know. Given that everybody loves the circus, why do you think it's marketed just to kids? I think it's a, it's a cultural difference, because in Europe, clowning and circus isn't just a, it's a family affair, but it's not a child affair. You know, it's something that you, you everyone goes together in Europe, and here, it was kind of like a really loud, colorful babysitter. You know, if you look at it historically, there's always been like the jester or the fool. Or, and those guys, they, they weren't for the kids. They were for the adults. They were, you know, here's a mirror for yourself. Check it out, just so you know. We're all human, we're fallible, we're, we make mistakes. We keep going, we keep trying to do the same thing over and over and over again, it doesn't work. You know, and I think that when clowning is done simply, and, and well, um, it's just true. And anyone can relate to that. I, I think that there's, it's always the way. The simplest idea is the best. It just always happens that way. My thanks to Lorenzo Pisoni. Next time, we're going to be sitting down with John Rando, the director of Toxic Avenger, currently in previews at New World Stages. But before we go, I want to leave you with this thought from George Wolfe. He cautioned playwrights to be very specific about the directors they choose because the production is like a baby that will have equal qualities of both. So, how about you? Ever seen a show where you felt you could pick out the director's work from the playwrights? Ever worked on one? Got any funny stories about bad marriages? Leave us a comment at www.jeremysgreenroom.com. You can also friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and or RSS us so you'll know when the next episode is posted. And hey, while you're on the site, do leave a comment. Let us know if you've seen any good shows or if there's anyone out there you'd like to see in the green room. We really do want to hear from you because we feel that theater is interactive and we'd like you to participate in the process. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time in the green room.